Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for week five of You Asked For It Budget Crafting. And today we are going to make iridescent paint requested by Tammy Frazier. And we are going to play with some texture paste, which was requested by Dawn Barkley. And so we'll just go ahead and get started right away. So what we have here is we'll start with the texture or with the um, iridescent paint. And so here are three that I have already um, got ready and we'll make another one so I can show you how we do it. But all you need is mica powder. Now you can go to the craft store and you can buy mica powder. It's not cheap, um, but you can also go to the Dollar Tree. This is LA Colors. It is just a... Um, that's, it's sealed. Um, it's a eyeshadow. That one's sealed too. Well, you unscrew the top and it's got a little brush in there to put the eyeshadow on. But we want to get the eyeshadow out. It's very hard to try and get it out the top because of the shape that they've got the bottle so that it doesn't spill. So the way to get them open, now this is LA Colors. It's called Shimmering Loose eyeshadow. Um, for a while they had them in little round pots which was really great because that was um, they were easy to just unscrew the top and it was the whole thing was open. Uh, and if you can't find a powder you can just take a regular shimmery eye powder and just pulverize it. This has just been pressed really hard to make it solid. Um, you know when you go ahead and you use your little um, you know your thing on it you can see how it all just, you know, it just turns right back to powder. And so you've got all that powder right there. So all you do is you you can just take um, regular shimmery eyeshadow and just go ahead and, and turn it into a shimmery powder to do exactly the same thing. But the way to get these open, because like I said, you can't, and I don't have one that's not... Maybe this, okay, this one's not sealed. Here we go. So this is what they look like. They have a little brush in them, but then it goes straight way down there and the brush barely goes. It goes, the hole is that deep and it's on an angle. And when you put the brush in there, then the brush touches the powder. If you tip it upside down, then the powder gets up here next to that hole, it comes right up to here and doesn't come through the hole. So it's very hard to try and get it out by like shaking it out or something. So we're gonna take the bottom off. And the way to, you you know, just, what you do is you come in just a little bit from the edge. Don't do it in the middle because it'll be harder to pop off because of leverage. So come in a little bit from the edge. Take a pokey tool. You can drill a hole in it with a drill, um, a Phillips head screwdriver, and just go ahead and, whoops, be very careful not to hurt yourself. Just push down on it. It's rounded on the bottom, so that's why that did that. But normally I just kind of... Just twist and twist until you'll kind of feel it get through the bottom of the plastic. And then when you feel it get through the bottom, not quite yet, um, then you can just pop that bottom right off and dump it out. And then it kind of will pop back in also. So like now it's through there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, and it's still not through there. Okay, well, I'm going to show you that it's not super. The other three that I did were like so easy. There we go. Now I felt it actually move and go through. Okay, so now it's through. So then what you're going to do is you're just going to pull back on whatever it is you stuck through there, and it will just pop that bottom right off. So now we have got our shimmer, but we want to turn it into something that we can paint onto a project. And we want it to stick to that project. So the other three that I did, I did in these small pots. And so that's this size, but they're hard to stir up and everything in there. So I'm going to make today's in this larger one. These come from the Dollar Tree. You get like 10 of them in a package for a dollar, but any kind of a good tight, you want a nice tight seal um, type container will work for this project. And now we don't want to fill this up because then we'd have the same problem as I had here was, you know, trying to stir it um, when it was full. So just because we've got the bigger container doesn't mean we're going to 
make more. Um, you can always make more later. So I'm just using this as plain old Elmer's washable school glue, any white PVA glue. If it's super, super thick, you can put a few drops of water in it. If after you make it and it has sat a while, whoops, now see, I just filled that halfway and that's a little bit too much because I don't want, so fill it about a quarter of the, of the way and then take your mica powder and just dump that in there about another quarter. So it's about equal parts and depends on how light, how light or dark you want it. The more you put in, the darker it will be, the closer it will be to the exact color of, of what you put in there. And the less you put in, the lighter it will be. So you may want a light one, then you just don't put as much mica. If you want it darker, you put in a little bit more. If it gets too thick, because remember the mica is a powder, so it's going to thicken up your glue, um, you can put in a few drops of water. So you just stir it up until you get it really well stirred. And the very first time that you do it, you want to really make sure that you get it mixed up well. And then each time that you use it, you'll just stir it a little bit before you start. It does stay pretty well mixed, but just to make sure that you've got it mixed up, just stir it each time that you use it. And basically most, um, even your craft shimmers and stuff that you have, you really should kind of do the same thing so that you have a really nice mix. So there we go. Now we have blue shimmer paste. And let's see. While we're at it, we'll just really quick do a gold one. Now, what you do when you're done, because obviously we have lots of shimmer left, you're just going to take that top and then just push down on it, and it kind of snaps back in. Now, you still have a hole on the bottom, so if you flip it the other way, powder will come out that hole. So you want to kind of leave them upside down, find something to set them in because the cap is rounded. So you're just going to come in. The reason you come in a little bit from the edge is right next to the edge, there is um, the plastic is thicker, and there's kind of a little lip on it. That's what clips the bottom into the container. So just twist it back and forth until it goes through. And that's through. So then just again, pull away and it pops that right off of there. We'll put some glue in here about a quarter of the way full. And then we'll just dump some of our gold mica in there. And stir that one up. And because that mica does stick, um, I use separate sticks to, to stir it because it's a solid color and you know the 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 powder is a is the color that it is we're mixing it with the glue so if you were to get some of that blue in there it wouldn't necessarily change the color um you would have like bits of blue and bits of gold i mean they would mix together but i don't know what i'm trying to say it's not like missing mixing two colors of wet paint where they really will blend, you know, and make a whole different color. So there we go. Now see, this is kind of thick because of the, um, because the mica powder is a powder. And so if you want it thinner, I prefer it this way. Um, but if you want it thinner, you can put a little bit of water in there. And if, you know, it's been a week or two and it's getting kind of thick, and you want to put some water or you want it a little thinner, then you can just add a couple of, do it very slowly, just a couple of drops and a couple of drops so that you don't get it too thin. I'm going to push these out of the way. I'm going to put the top back on this one. because There's nothing like having to clean up a whole bunch of mica powder off your surface. Because as you can see, it definitely makes everything sparkle. And I already wiped that off with this cloth. 
Okay, so now what are we going to do with it? Well, it's a shimmer paste, so you can, or shimmer paint. Um, so you can do with it whatever you would like to do with it. So let's, um, we can do, a, let's use a stencil. And I grabbed out some, I saw the Paper Outpost um, use index cards the other day. And I thought, well, that was really pretty. So let's just go ahead. Now, these do not blend um, like some paints might. Um, these ones are, if you put down one color and put another color on top of it, it it's not like they'll blend and turn into a different color. They will, it, you will just have one color on top of another. That was not good, so I'm gonna take that off. Now these are really super cheap index cards, and I could just hear that kind of peeling the paper away. So normally these um, removable, or you know, they stick down, but they're supposed to not rip your paper. Um, and normally they don't, but you can also, if you've got a really thin paper and a brand new, these are brand new stencils, you could take it and kind of stick it on your shirt a couple of times to make it not as sticky. I never thought to do that because I didn't know it was going to stick. So, and then you can go ahead and you can put a little bit of it. Well, I've got some here on the stir stick. So you can put some onto a sponge and sponge it on. So, and because it's got the glue in it, it is quite sticky. And so, you know, sponging it, it, it's kind of sticky and it kind of dries fairly fast. So sponging it is definitely possible, um, but not really my favorite method of putting it on. I prefer to use a brush, but I just wanted to show you that you can sponge it on there. Now let's take some of that blue and put some of that on with a paintbrush. And the one thing that you want to do, remember that, you know, this is glue and shimmer. And so you want to make sure that you put your brush and your stencil, you want to wash them off right away. Don't let them sit and dry because if that dries, I'm going to put the blue over top of the gold, too, a little bit. There was a spot over there where there was, like, um, I missed. So I just put that on there. Now, this blue is super, super light. You can see right through it. And the one thing I noticed as I was um, putting the top on the blue is I sure didn't put very much in there. And so that's really light. So I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, see, that's still almost full. I really did not put much. And I had more glue than I had thought, so... Let's get some more of that blue in there. There we go. Stir that up. And so now we'll see how much darker it makes it by putting in more mica powder. So maybe it's a good thing that I forgot. so we can see the difference of adding more and see if it actually makes a difference or is this blue just a really light color? Okay. So we'll put this one over here. And that is definitely making a difference compared to what the other was like. So we'll just put some blue on there. I should have sponged this side, but while well, we wanted to be able to compare them and I brushed the other side. So I'm just gonna wipe this off pretty good and grab some gold and do this side gold and then we'll see what they look like. Okay, I'm going to put that in some water right away and see if we can peel these off without ripping our paper. 
And if your paper kind of starts to rip, go to a different portion of your stencil. And instead of pulling straight, kind of where, where it's kind of starting to rip, pull on an angle and that will help it not, that'll kind of help it to release where it's ripping the paper. It's starting to rip right there. So I'm gonna just keep going this way and see if I can get over there without having it ripped too bad over there. So kind of going on an angle. There we go. And so there we go. That is the one that was painted. And then this is the one where the gold was sponged and we didn't have as much mica in the blue. You have to be really careful with these, with the fine bits um, in them so that you don't rip those too. So you kind of pull it towards those bits. There we go. And on that one, I did get off the, off the edges. And I have mica all over my hands. Normally, I would wash my hands before I do this because some of the shimmer that's on the outside of the paper is from my hands. But there we go. This is with the darker blue, that's with the lighter blue. This is sponged gold and that is painted gold. And so it works really well. I like these. And just make sure that you seal them up well when you put them away. Ali, no, no. And um, sometimes you can even with these little ones that have this on there, you can kind of like let a little bit of the air out. And so that is how you make the shimmer paint. It's just that quick. And um, it's, you know, all of those didn't even take, took about half a bottle of glue, not even. And a little, probably half of each of the containers of, of mica. So it is a very cheap way. 50 cents worth of mica and probably five cents worth of glue. Um... Now, remember, I told you, you know, don't let those dry like that. So I'm going to set this aside, grab another one. Um, and a lot of times what I do when I'm washing my stencils, you can take your stencil and throw, I have a bucket over here, just a, one of those wash tubs. Make sure you get yourself one of these because they really come in handy. And um, when you're doing something like this where it needs to be washed right away, you can just throw your things in there and get to them when you're done doing what you're doing but so that they don't dry and get ruined. But what I'm going to do, I wish I had unstickified these a little bit before, but just go ahead and put my, I put my stencils when I wanna clean them onto a, just onto another piece of paper. I normally don't use soapy water, but I'm going to grab a little bit of that soapy water. I normally just have a wet paper towel to kind of wipe it off with. And what I do is I just kind of rub it around and wipe it off onto, and it rubs off onto the paper, or it gets on the paper and on your paper towel. It's not wet enough. And it does, you know, I said it's not wet enough, but it is squeezed out tight, but I just didn't have any, hardly any water on it at all. So I'm going to clean my stencil that way. Now, if you get it completely clean, then you're done. If you don't get it completely clean, throw it in the water and get it cleaned up later. Normally, sticky stencils, I just kind of clean them right away. Because I'm not really sure if I leave them in the water for a long time, what might happen. That's sticking again. But there, can you see that? Isn't that pretty? And even that still has shimmer to it. So um, so that is how I clean my stencils and I wind up getting, here was a couple I made earlier um, with the pink and the brown and this was the one that I made and then this was me cleaning it off. 
So, and I cleaned it off here, and then I just got just a little bit more. I think I did this, and I did this, and then I just kind of dabbed my rag into the, the cap of the, the cap of this, because it had stuff on it, and, um, and then just kind of did a few to just fill in the extra places, because I loved the looks of that. So, but you can wind up with this nice dark look, or you can wind up with this light look, and... Um, normally I would do the other one too, but I'm going to throw them in the water. And because they float, I'm making sure I put them in upside down so that the painted side is to the water. So that that glue does not dry. But yeah, and then you can just go in and just round the edges. And you can um, edge around it with ink or with your colors now it does not it doesn't stick to the sponge as well to ink the edges um well it's just not it's not ink it's more of a very solid paint or whatever so um you know if you do the edges you have to get a little bit at a time and um and you have to continue you know to get more it doesn't like sometimes once you especially if you get a lot of ink like uh, distress ink or something on your sponge, you can go all the way around the whole thing. But, you know, with this, because it's a glue paint, it, I don't know if I want to say it soaks in, but it dries quicker because you've got it on here so thin. I wonder if I can get any off the gold. Nope. So there, I didn't quite make it all the way around and I'm out of paint, so I'll finish it up later. Maybe I'll do the other half of it gold. But there we go. And then maybe I'll put a little bit of background in it because I went over the edge of the stencil and kind of made a bit of a mess here and there. So maybe if I just take, oh, I don't know, I could uh, just dot something on there or I could take a background stencil and just kind of cover those up a little bit so it looks like they're supposed to be there instead of just looking messy. So, that is how you can make your own glimmer paint that's very reasonable and will go a long ways because you have all of this, but then you have enough to make at least another one, um, if not two more, you know, before you run out of stuff. So, and then texture paste. Okay, so texture paste you can make your own. There's lots of recipes out there to make it with flour or to make it with cornstarch or to make it with plaster. Um, and I have used them all before. The one thing about it is a lot of those crack. And some of them, they'll put stuff in it. They might put some glue in it that might help it not crack and that type of thing. But to me, a very cheap and easy way to get texture paste is go to the Dollar Tree and just pick up some lightweight speckling. Now this is, it's paintable and it shrink and crack, it won't shrink or crack. Now, if you bend it super hard, the, it might crack, but that's the thing about those others. I find that the flower ones and the cornstarch ones and everything, they kind of crack when you fold the paper. And sometimes if you get them on there really thick, they'll fall off. So I just don't make my own that way. Um, this works really well. So, and this was a very intricate stencil. And so I just wanted to, to show you how well it works. And, you know, you get the dimension, however thick your stencil is. They, they just work really, it works really great. And it's $1. And, you know, there's as much in there as you're going to find other places. Now it's lightweight, so it doesn't weigh down your paper. And, um, we'll do that same stencil. On this one and um, just you can get these at the Dollar Tree too but you don't need this a credit card would work just fine an old credit card an old gift card um, and you just use that to scrape it across so I'm just going to take this and you know it it works really well you don't want to leave it uncovered you want to make sure you put your lid back on when you're done but that's no different than any other texture paste that you would by any store so you just put it in the, put it on there and then scrape across to pick it up off of the outside of your 
um, stencil because you don't want to waste it and you don't want too much of it um, to have to wash off. And again, this is another one and it doesn't matter if it's this or if it's a store-bought texture paste. Most texture paste, um, you want to make sure that you get your stencil in some water. And, and to me, it's soapy water works the best. I've done it with just plain water, but sometimes I've had it almost kind of still dry um, on the plain water, so in plain water. So just put it in a bucket. Oops, now I lifted it up, so I might have messed it up a little bit there. But let's see. There we go. And it works wonderful. Look, we didn't miss, it didn't miss anything. And I lifted it up, so I kind of smudged it right there. But if you look at this one, if I hadn't lifted it up, it gives a nice, clean um, texture to it. And you can use it however you would use any other texture paste. And it's just kind of, I'm going to put what's left on my thing back in here. And it's just a creamy... It's not super wet or sticky, so it dries fairly fast. And um, I just really love this for texture paste. Now, you know, if you don't have a Dollar Tree, um, you can get it at your hardware store. Again, it's called Lightweight Spackling. It's to fill holes and stuff in your wall. But you could get that at any type of hardware store. Even if you're, like, overseas, I'm sure they have something. They may not call it spackling. They might call it something else. But it's like if, if you're going to paint your room and you want to fill the nail holes, just tell the hardware that's what you're looking for, and you should be able to find something like this. So there are also wetter types um, that I actually use other types of spackling and mud, drywall mud um, that I use, put it in the water, um, for other projects that it works better on those, like my jars. Here, I'll show you one. So this jar is drywall mud. And so this whole thing is all drywall mud. It has a, a plaster um, piece that I had made pushed into it and beads pushed into it around the edge. And then I like tapped it to make it very um, bumpy. And that is what made the lid of this jar. And it sticks really well and it's really quite sturdy. So, um, you know, that is what the wetter one will do. And, you know, the wetter one doesn't work as well this way, but it does still work this way. So this dry one is kind of fairly new to me. Um, I'm used to using the older one. Now, which one did I just do? Okay, this is the one that's dry. So then, you know, you can go ahead and you can take like a little bit of your... Um, what do we just call this? Like your shimmer paint and rub it on the top like that. So, and with me, I have a really hard time with this. I watch people that they do this and they can just like get everything on the top. I wind up getting it all over the place. But if I do, then I just go ahead and put some more and nobody will know the difference. But what you can also do, and then I stuck it in the water. How silly am I? You can take your same stencil and set it back on top if you want it to be more, um, you want to color it, but you want the color to be more just on the top of what you have just done. Try and get the water off of this. Okay, so Let's say I wanted to put some on top of there, but obviously, you know, look at how I did there. I got I got it on the top of there, but then also all over the paper. So you just take your stencil and put it right back over top after it's dry. And then you can take, let's do a different color. Let's do some green. And what I do with these when I open them back up again, this was done... Um, on the 18th of June. So it's been a little over a week. And see that has kind of separated into a green and a blue. I don't know if you can kind of see that turquoisey color there. So we just want to mix it well. 
And that's just because those are the colors that they used to make this color green when they did it. I only put the regular green eyeshadow in here. So you want to just mix them up. And then you can paint it on there or do however you would like to. I wonder if I can just rub it on there or just tap it on there. Yeah, probably would work better with a with a paintbrush. And you want to hold it down if you're doing that so that it doesn't go under the stencil. But rubbing in on a stencil um, a lot of times will make the color go underneath your stencil. So we'll see how this wound up working. Because really you should you should pat like this on a stencil. So that your color is only going straight up and down. And don't have too much color on your paintbrush, your sponge, whatever you are using. So there, yep, I did. Especially here where I was just padding, it got on top. Here where I was rubbing, it went underneath. So, but that is how you can, you know, you, you play around with it, you test it, you you get better at it as you go. Um, you know, a lot of times I find that if I haven't done something in a while, when I go back to do it, it's like, oh, you know, I kind of messed it up. I forgot not to do that or I forgot to do this. But yeah, see there, just get it on the top. And of course, if you take your time, you can get a little bit. I, I missed a little spot right there, but I wasn't paying attention. But, and then when that dries, you've got your shimmer there. You've got your texture paste. And um, it works out really nicely. So, and you didn't spend an arm and a leg to get those things. So, I hope that this helped. I hope that if you... um. If you make this, that you have a good time making it and playing with it. It really does make a, a very inexpensive, fun thing to play with. Oh, I did want to tell you, too, I tried mixing it with white paint, um, and it really did not work. You know, this was the brown. This is the brown here. And then I mix it with white paint. I had to add water to it because, the, you know, the paint is already a little bit thick. It was just plain old white craft paint. It was just apple barrel, white craft paint. Um, but because the mica was thick, I had to add some water. But it really did not... Yeah, I'd even have to add more water again. It really didn't have much shimmer to it at all. Even if I really spread it out really well, it just really did not have much shimmer. So mixing it with paint, not the best idea. I thought that it would, you know, be another easy way to do it. But... So this is, this is the paint, this is paint one-to-one -one with the mica, so half and half. Um, and this one was twice as much mica as paint, and then I had to add water because I put in so much mica, and no matter what, it really did not get a shimmer to it. If you look super close, you might see a little tiny sparkle here or there, but to me it wasn't, it wasn't worth messing with. But these ones, I think, turn out just great. So, I hope that this helped both of you out. I hope that this gives you a way to have shimmer paints and to have um, texture paste that is reasonable and fun to play with. The stencil came from the Dollar Tree. The other stencil came from a, a craft outlet that I go to. Um, so, and I don't keep my packaging. I take everything out and put them in file folders, so I couldn't tell you who the maker was on that stencil, but on that one but this one came from the Dollar Tree so thank you very much for stopping by I really do appreciate you and I hope that you all have an outstanding day bye bye